I'm Walter Isaacson and this is History in Five. Today I'm going to tell you five things you didn't know about the computer. The first was that one of the great pioneers of the computer was a woman, Ada Lovelace, the only legitimate child of Lord Byron. You know, she was sort of a poet by birth, but her mother didn't want her to turn out to be like her father, Lord Byron, so had her tutored only in mathematics. So, Ada became somebody who was very interested in poetical science, as she put it. She loved combining math with technology. That's one of the secrets of the digital age, to stand, as Steve Jobs used to say, at the intersection of the humanities and of technology. So Ada Lovelace traveled around England and she loved the way punch cards were being used to create beautiful patterns in the looms and the weaving machines. And she had a friend named Charles Babbage who was building a machine that did calculations, also using punch cards. What Ada came up with was the notion that a punch card could be used on a calculating machine like Charles Babbage's difference in analytical engine and it could be used to do things not just numbers. It could be used to do things like music and art and patterns. So she comes up with the notion of the general purpose computer. The second thing to know about the computer is Alan Turing's role. Alan Turing was somebody who was a great mathematician in England and then he went to Bletchley Park secretly to help that team that was trying to break the German codes during World War II. And he came up with a, a machine that helped do it and even helped inform the first electronic tube computer, the Colossus. Besides that, Alan Turing had a theory. His theory was that machines could think. Ada Lovelace had said, machines will never originate thought, but Alan Turing said, how do we know that? And he came up with a game that he called the imitation game. And he said, if you put a machine and a person behind a curtain or in a different room, and you send them both questions and you can't tell them apart, then there's no reason to think that the machine isn't thinking. The third thing to know about the computer is the role of women like Grace Hopper, or as my daughter used to say, girls who can code get jobs. Grace Hopper was a lieutenant in the Navy. She had joined the Navy during World War II, and she gets assigned to the Mark I computer at Harvard that's being built by Howard Aiken. Now, all the men think that the computer hardware is the big deal, you know, boys with their toys, but Grace Hopper realized that teaching the machine how to do things, giving it an instruction set, doing the programs, would be one of the most important things a computer could do. And so Grace Hopper, working with Howard Aiken at Harvard, ends up programming the Mark I computer. She even, uh, her team even comes up with the notion of bug because one day the machine wasn't working right and they looked inside and they found a moth. So they put the moth, took it out of the machine, put it in their log book and said, we debugged the machine. The fourth thing you need to know about a computer is that some people think that John Vincent Adanasoff should be credited with inventing the first computer. He worked in the basement of the physics building at Iowa State all by himself with just the help of a graduate student and he was able to create an electronic circuit that did logical things. And if you like the romantic notion of the lone inventor, you kind of write about John Vincent Adanasoff not getting enough credit for his machine. What happens is people like John Mockley, who was building ENIAC at the University of Pennsylvania, come visit him in Iowa, take some of his ideas. It was the subject of a lawsuit that lasted for years. But the problem with Adonassoff is he didn't have a team around him. He didn't have somebody who could help him make the punch cards work, or somebody who could help him assemble the engineering of the machine. So when he gets called into the Navy, his machine is just left in the basement there, and after a while they throw it away. So in my view, he deserves a lot of credit for being innovative, but he's not really a true innovator because he can't make it work. He can't execute and he can't form that team around him.
The fifth thing you need to know about a computer, at least the way I describe it in my book, is that John Mockley and Presper Eckert really deserve most of the credit for getting the first all-electronic programmable computer up and running. There's a big historic debate about people like Hermann Zuse in Germany, or the people at Bletchley Park breaking the German code, or John Vincent Adanasoff in Iowa State, who really built the first computer in the early 1940s. But if you look at the computer that is totally working, that actually is put into, into use, that uses electronic circuits, that's programmable so it can do many things, that's really ENIAC at the University of Pennsylvania. It started out as a way to calculate missile trajectories for World War II, but then it got reprogrammed by six women who were great mathematicians and brought in to teach it how to do things like atom bomb explosions and that sort of thing. So if you define a computer as something we can program, something that can do multiple tasks, something that's electronic, and something that actually works, it's really ENIAC at the University of Pennsylvania, created by the team, led by John Mockley, and uh, Presper Eckert that in my mind deserves the credit of being called the first computer.